The following program is rated EG and is not suitable for viewing by appliance operators. Elmer guidance is recommended for immature hams. If you believe a legal limit amplifier should be lightweight, menu driven, or locked behind firmware, stop watching now. Some amplifiers are toys, some are decent machines, but this one, this is a tank. The America Electronics AL82 isn't just another box with tubes, it's the last great legal limit amplifier built to take punishment and hit back harder. The AL82 rolled out in the early 1990s, just as the rest of the industry started to go soft companies move towards lighter, cheaper, solid-state amps, eventually hiding behind firmware that tripped if you sneezed on the coax. Ameritron didn't flinch. They doubled down. Two 3-500s, 3.5 kilovolts of plate voltage, and a transformer that looks like it belongs in a substation. This wasn't made for appliance operators. It was made for hams who actually operate. The front panel still looks the part. Dual illuminated meters, LED lit and later models, showing plate current, grid current, high voltage, power output, and ALC feedback. Even a 12 volt RCA jack on the back, perfect for driving external relays or accessories. And when you pop the lid, it doesn't look like a plastic toy, it looks like a real amplifier. Peter Dahl transformer in the earlier runs, Harbuck building them to Dale spec through magnetic components in the later years, Cornell doubler capacitors, and a full wave bridge rectifier to keep voltage sag under control at full key down. The wiring is laid out so you can actually work on it. Need to swap a tube? Five minutes and you're done. Try that on a modern LDMOS brick. You'll be shipping it overseas before you can even find the manual. Inside, you'll also find a proper band switch, big variable capacitors with reduction drives, and most importantly, glass chimneys over the tubes. Force fed by a turbine blower, not a flimsy muffin fan. Air comes in from the side, across the supply, and out the top. You can even set the fan depending on how you plan to run it. My advice? Medium high, unless you're planning to go to war. Yeah, it's heavy, and that's the point. If you can't pick it up, you're in the wrong hobby. If you're an older ham, you're excused, and I salute you. On air, the AL82 is everything you want an amp to be. Loud, stable, clean. I've driven mine with Collins, with Drake, with the JRC JST245, the ICOM IC7300, and reports are always the same. Solid, sharp, and easy to copy. Modern solid state amps need digital pre-distortion, just to keep from spraying trash across the band. This thing, it doesn't need tricks. It's linear by design. And it even sounds better than most of the operators using it. No splatter, no junk, just authority. I like them so much I bought two. Yeah, one would have been enough. But when you find something this good, you lock it in. Tubes are still out there. RF parts, Pentalabs, Matchlet, even old IMAX pop up if you're lucky. For price to performance, nothing else touches it. That's why this amplifier stayed in production all the way into the mid-2020s. How many other tube amps can you say that about? And here's the truth. You're not going to see another amp like this again. Not at this price. Not built like this. Not with this kind of longevity. Decades of production, while the rest of the industry slid into disposable silicon. Today's amps are lighter, sure, but they're fragile. They're locked behind firmware, they shut down at the first sign of trouble, and when they fail, you're paying shipping that costs more than your antenna. The AL82, you fix it yourself, you keep it alive, you keep it on the air. 
the Ameritron AL82 is the last of the great legal limit tanks. Heavy, overbuilt, clean, and unstoppable. If you want an amplifier for just works, year after year, without excuses, this is it. Subscribe if you'd rather tune the plate knob than swipe a touchscreen. This is my AL82, one of them. I have two, obviously, as I just outlined. So pretty simple, what I'm going to do here, I'll uh, do some modulation under single sideband. I'll show you a key down test uh, as well. The key down test I'll do with my LP100 set to the tune mode, which gives you the output power in average mode. And then we'll flip across to Big W. Big W is PEP reading mode on the LP100. These tests have been done on a closed system. I'm well aware of the VK legal limit of 400 watts. But we'll do this test into a dummy load to show you what this amp can really do when you tune it precisely. No need to ever run it this hard if you do live in the United States or somewhere where you can run 1500 watts. Really, that 1KW to 1500 watt range is going to be the sweet spot and pretty much give you all that you need. Finding this second AL82 really foiled my attempt to find a Drake L4B amplifier. I really wanted one to complete my Drake B line there at one stage, but when I found this, like I said before, I just grabbed it. And I'm so happy with this. It's just such a pleasure to use. Then again, maybe one day I'll find the Drake L4B. It would be nice to review one here on YouTube. Maybe one day. Anyway, here we go. I wanted to mention a few things, but I didn't record in the voiceover. I really like the way how Ameritron went about things with this amplifier. A simple uh, soft start, for example, you get literally uh, a fraction of a second or so where this uh, resistor is in line. And then we go across to uh, full power, which is all that's needed for the capacitor bank to uh, charge up. Very simple but effective. And an isolation relay here as well. So when the amp is cut off, the outside universe as BBI would say, is effectively uh, shut out. People will rag on the Miratron slash, MF slash MFJ for their quality, but uh, I mean, the soldering here is absolutely excellent. The wiring here is uh, all very well uh, thought out. Extremely uh, tidy. Like over here, for example, where the uh, filament leads come out on the uh, secondary side of the filament transformer. Neatly uh, cable tied together with uh, all the wiring around here. And yeah, I mean, just a really nice amplifier overall, I've uh, got to say. Uh, I also wanted to mention as well, the glitch resistor as well. Decent sized uh, glitch resistor. You don't see these in TL922s or SB220s. They're much smaller. And that's where I really like this American style type of uh, construction where there's more working room uh, around here. The Japanese obviously tried to shrink everything down. And this B220 is a bit more compact uh, again. But this is just uh, very, very easy to uh, work on and very nicely thought out. I'm a uh, huge fan. And of course, around here uh, the, with the band switch as well, the green wire is where the uh, 11, <coughs> um, 10 meter modification is done as well for uh, the export version. I'm really, really, really impressed. All right, so we were previously tuned up on 40 meters. Tuning up on 20 is a breeze. Going to 20 meters. I already know with the plate. That's the rough ballpark where we uh, need to be. And our numbers here on the uh, low control are roughly uh, the ballpark with where I need to be as well when you're going into a one-to-one -one dummy load. So when you know your gear, when you know where you're tuning, 
you can pretty much hit it with uh, everything you've got there uh, straight away. So, that was a mistake. I was meant to be on standby. So, going into the uh, amp, 110 watts. This won't hurt it at all. Gonna be a bit tricky to do this one handed, but we'll manage. this so we pick the grid and I'm gonna back things down there uh, slightly you can already see here if that's where our uh, maximum output range is and then over here on the meter 1500 watts 1500 key down which is our design specification the power meter here on the unit is also pretty accurate. 1500. So then we'll go across to SSB. One, two, three, hello test, one, two, three, hello test, one, two, three. You see that grid current, one, two, three, hello test. Okay, when you tuned uh, correctly, the grid current should barely move. Coming across to the plate current. One, two, three, audio. One, two, three, hello, one, two. Okay, we're going at maximum here right now, so we'll go across to our peak reading range. One, two, three, hello, test. One, two, three, hello, one, two, three. Hello, test, one, two, three. And that's the peak reading range there. One, two, three, audio, one, two. 2 kilowatts PUP. We'll do that all day. Looking here at our uh, tubes as well. A bit hard to see on the camera, but I um, already hit them reasonably uh, hard. <clears throat> they uh, didn't really start to glow red there at all, but uh, might key down for three minutes and uh, do a bit of talking. These will uh, barely warm up. And of course, uh, when we actually go on the air, and back things down for the VK legal limit of 400 watts. This thing absolutely loafs with about 30 watts uh, driving it. And uh, I'll do this on all bands. Tuning gets a bit more uh, finicky up on the uh, higher bands, but you just be uh, careful and uh, you'll be perfectly fine. But um, yeah, you get a bit more leeway on the lower bands, but very, very fine movements on these controls can mean the difference between three to 400 watts worth of uh, variation on the higher bands. So just something to keep in mind. They're very, very easy to use, a real joy to operate. The Ameritron AL82, old school American muscle hemp. Thanks for watching and 73s.